Hey guys, welcome back to Oak Abode. I showed a little bit about our indoor garden on our Instagram and we got so many questions. So today I'm just going over what we have set up so far, what we've learned so far, and what we're going to change for the future. This is very much in kind of the beta testing phase, so hopefully the mistakes that we are making will help you guys not make the same mistakes. Even without it being perfect, we are still really happy with how it's functioning so far. It's just kind of in an ugly storage area in her basement right now, so it's not much to look at, but it is doing the job. And I know people are gonna wonder how much it costs to run. When I ran the numbers, I came to about $4 a month. So that can very quickly be cost efficient. And I'll link the exact lights that we purchased for you guys below, as well as other resources. My goal is to be able to grow spinach, arugula, plenty of herbs and microgreens. Right now, everything is kind of in the beginning phases, but here you can see I have some baby basil, some thyme. Actually, I'm growing absolutely everything from seed. I'm trying to avoid the annual kind of shopping spree at the nursery when I spend way too much on nursery starts. So hopefully this will help us save a little bit of money and help me have a little self-control. We also just threw some aloe and some of our cacti under the lights to see how they do. Different lights are better for different plants, but so far they are happy to have the extra light. So I'm just gonna go over the plants that we've been testing so far. On this shelf, I have our microgreens. This is just kind of a standard salad mix. I'll link the seeds that we, I'll link them for you guys below. They were so yummy and I never ate microgreens before, but I'm finding that I really love them. I know people are gonna ask why I'm not growing lettuce. I'm sure lettuce would do great in a system like this. And it's just personally, I don't enjoy lettuce. It doesn't have a whole lot nutritionally to offer. So obviously I love the microgreens. They're more mild than the spinach that I usually eat and you can put them on absolutely everything. I've been putting them on soups, breakfast sandwiches. It, the possibilities are endless. Next, I have a variety of baby spinach. I love spinach, but I pretty much gave up on growing it outside because it just bolts so quickly. It's just almost not even worth it for me to grow it. So that's why I'm trying to grow it indoors because I should be able to extend the harvest window quite a bit when the temperature is controlled and the amount of light is controlled. This is after about almost two weeks of growth. You can see their little true leaves starting to come in there. Next, I have another variety of spinach. This is more of a, I think it's a larger leaf variety. These were just seeds I had left over from a couple years ago, actually. This one is supposed to be slower to bolt, but it's actually growing quite a bit quicker than the baby spinach variety, which could be because of the seed, but it could also be because of the type of soil I use. I kind of think it's just happier in this soil. So I'm trying out a bunch of different grow methods to see what is the most efficient. With supply and food shortages the way they are right now, we were actually having a hard time finding spinach and certainly arugula consistently. So that's one of the main reasons I wanted to do the indoor garden. I just want a reliable way to get our nutritional veggies. Next, we have some sunflower shoots. So this is another one that came in our microgreens pack. As you guys can see, I let these go way too long. My husband will still eat them, but I, I think they're a little strong at this point. I believe you are supposed to harvest them when the true leaves are just starting to show. Don't quote me on that. But as you can see, they have some serious true leaves. These true leaves have been around for a while, and so they are not quite as mild as I think if I had harvested them sooner. So what I'm gonna do with these, we did eat some of them, they were fine, but I'm actually just gonna feed these to the chickens and start over, I think. The chickens will appreciate them more than I will. It's worth noting that these also grew super fast. So 
So that's kind of the setup that we have right now. As you guys can see, this is not the most space efficient way to have everything set up. So I'm gonna show you guys how we have the lights hanging and set up. Then I'm gonna show you what we're gonna change in the future so that we can fit quite a few more. So ideally, I would like to arrange the trays like this so that I can fit four on each shelf. But the problem is that we installed the lights a little too close together. So on kind of the outer edges of each tray, there's not as much light reaching the plant. So they were getting leggy on the outside. That's because we installed these lights too far in. So I think really the lights should be installed all the way at the edge here, because right now we have about this much space where the seedlings are not getting adequate light. So we will move those out and then because there is not going to be as much light, I think I am actually going to add a third light to the middle so that instead of having two, we will have three. I think that should give the seedlings plenty of light and I think they're going to be really happy. I am really loving these lights. They do not get hot like I expected. We had another LED grow light at one point that had to have its own fan and it got super hot and I did not like leaving it on unattended. These stay nice and cool. I can touch them very comfortably, so it's a lot less intimidating. Ian just hung them up with this paracord and it just kind of works like blinds do on a window where if you pull one string, you can lift up one side. If you pull both strings, the whole light will move up and down. And then once we get the light where we want it, we just sort of tie it in place. So it's nothing fancy, but it was really quick to set up and it is very functional. I'll just show you guys. We just kind of have this tied right here like so. It's nice to be able to move one side alone if you want to, because I am planning on growing lots of herbs and those will get much taller than the microgreens. So I could keep herbs on one side and microgreens on the other. This is what I use to water the microgreens when they're first planted, but after they get bigger, I do like to use this cute little watering can. I got it off Amazon. I'll link it for you. Also, I actually have a much more expensive watering can from Crate and Barrel that leaks like crazy. So I had to get this one and it does not leak. It's working just fine. I just water them once or twice a day, depending on how big the seedlings are. One thing I was concerned about with this setup was that there is not drainage inside these grow trays. And so that's kind of a no-no, but I was just anxious to get them started. And so I just kind of wanted to see, are they gonna work without drainage? Um, because if they do, then I will save myself a ton of headache. So far, I've been really surprised that I have not been having any wet root problems, any drainage issue problems. I don't know if that's because the plants are so little and I'm being pretty careful with watering but so far I'm actually getting away without having drainage in the trays so hopefully it doesn't come back to bite me in the butt but it saved me a ton of money these trays are not cheap and pebbles and that kind of thing it really adds up so I'm trying to do this as cheaply as possible to get the best return on investment and so far so good Today, I'm just thinning out some of the seedlings. So if you are lazy like me, you might try and do it with your fingernails at first, which actually ends up taking more time. <laughs> so I ended up using scissors and that works a lot better for the other trays. So we ate the seedlings too. I'm pretty sure I just put them in a smoothie or something. I might have fed them to the chickens. I honestly don't remember. I actually prefer to overseed cilantro and parsley, but I'm doing things by the book this time just to see if it works any better. I did provide drainage for the thyme because 
thyme is very sensitive to overwatering. I didn't have any pebbles when I was planting them, so I just used pistachio shells. <laughs> that was Ian's idea, and it's actually been working really, really well. So about half the container is pistachio shells, and the other half is soil. So I'm just going to show you guys what it looks like to harvest the sunflower microgreens. So these are just the ones that I gave to the chickens. We like to save these plastic containers from when we were buying veggies at the grocery store. And okay, I'll be honest, this was actually a container for pastries, not going to lie. But as you guys can see, it actually really fills up very quickly when you harvest these microgreens. I was surprised by how much we got out of one tray. So that pretty much sums up the intro to our indoor garden so far. I think I'm gonna focus on herbs and microgreens, but I will also try to grow spinach and arugula. I will update you guys in another couple weeks with where the indoor garden is at. Please leave your questions and comments below. And if you have an indoor growing setup, I would love to hear how yours is set up too. During these crazy times, it is really nice to have just a little bit more stability and ability to grow your own food, even during the dead of a Wisconsin winter like we have here. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time.